Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you free item positioning in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here that's just a piano. And it sounds like this. Now, normally in Reaper, you're going to have one sound playing on each track at a time. Unless you set it up with these options, under the Options menu, with Trim Content behind Media Items turned off. Let's turn off Crossfading. We could duplicate this. And we can hit two pianos at the same time on one track. We can see this better if we choose the option Show Overlapping Media Items in Lanes. Then we can see them both. Let's make a few more. And you can basically have as many as you want. But if you really want, multiple things on one track, you're probably going to want to use the mode free item positioning. And to turn it on, we'll go to track and right click. And right down here, we can choose free item positioning. And if we choose that, the items are all separated and move freely around each other. There's a little box down here where we could change the height of each of them. And like the name suggests, they're free to move around very easily. Just move them wherever you want, and we'll hear all the items at the same time, all on one track. And if we turn on our crossfades, the items will crossfade if we overlap them. So if I put this over here, they crossfade, or this one. We'll move this to the front. Crossfading still works as long as the items overlap. And in fact, if we turn on the other option, trim content behind media items, it's going to trim the items if we lay them on top of each other. So if I put this at the end here, it's going to trim this one or cut off the ending of it. We'll put it at the beginning. It'll trim the beginning of this item. But in general, we probably leave this option off. This way we can hear all these items, even if they're on top of each other. And if it gets a bit messy, we can use the action to clean it up. Let's go to the action menu. And let's search free item positioning. And there's an action right here that's going to auto reposition the items in this mode. Let's give it a keystroke so we could use it anytime we want. So now if I hit that keystroke with one of these items selected, it cleans it all up nicely. So if they ever get messy, just select one of them, hit that keystroke, and it cleans it up quite nicely. Now you're probably wondering why would you use this? Let's check out a project where this makes sense. I have a project right here with a bunch of background vocals, with two tracks per harmony, with a total of eight tracks. Let's hear it. Now, the way it's set up here, we have a separate track for each vocal, but we don't have to set it up this way. We could put all these vocals on one track, making it a lot easier to adjust things. Now we could just create a folder by making a new track and putting them all in a folder, but we could also just put them all on the same track. So let's make this bigger. Let's right click it and switch it to free item positioning. Then we could drag all these items to this track. Make sure we turn off Trim Content behind Media Items. Let's also turn off Course Fading. Then we can just drag them right here. Notice what's happening. They're going out of time. So instead, 
Let's first lock the left to right movement. Just right click up here. Make sure we turn on locking items will prevent left right movement. Turn it on. And now if we move it, it goes to that track, but we can't change the timing of it. It won't move left or right, which is helpful for doing this. So let's just drag them all up to this new track. Then we can delete all these tracks. We don't need them. Make this bigger with a color. Then we can clean this up with that keystroke. Now the tracks are nice and neat. But if we play it, the tracks are playing back in mono. And before, they were stereo. So what we need to do is just select every other one, like this, double click it to open up the properties and just pan them to the left and select the other ones and pan those to the right. So now it should sound exactly the same. And it does. So now we could treat all these vocals as one thing, because they're all on one track, with one volume, one pan, and one effect. So if we want to add EQ to this, we could add it right here, and it's going to apply to all the vocals. But if we want to do separate things, we can still do that. Like we could adjust the volume right up here on each of them. See the cursor changes? We could change the volume of any item we want. Maybe we want to hear more of the high harmony. Just select these. Then go right here and drag down the volume to hear more of the high harmony. Or if we want to hear more of the lower harmony, just select these and bring these down. So we can still control the volume of each part, even though they're all on the same track. And we could also mute them completely separately. Maybe we could select these, right click, go to item settings, and just mute them. Although my favorite way is using a button. So instead of doing this, let's go to our preferences. Let's go down here to appearance, media. Then turn on the option not muted along with muted. And then we'll see a little button right up here in the upper left corner. So we can mute our items very quickly. So I can select all these, mute them, and we'll only hear this harmony. We'll just hear this harmony if we mute the other ones. So we can still control them completely separately, even with effects. So if we wanted to add EQ just to this item, just right click it, go to Take, Show Effects Chain for Active Take, or we can hit the keystroke Shift D. So let's just do that, select the item, hit Shift D, and we can add an effect just to that item. Let's add an EQ, and this EQ will just be applied to this item. So we can still EQ them separately. But one of my favorite uses for free item positioning is to use it like a scrapbook track. Let me give you an example. Let's go to a new project, make a new track, right click, free item positioning, and we could drag items to this track from our computer hard drive. I have a folder right here with a bunch of samples I want to choose from. Let's select a bunch of them and drag them in to this track. Put them all on a single track. And now they play one after another. But let's drag them on top of each other, like this. Then hit that keystroke and it cleans it up. Then we can choose 
which then we want to use very easily. But creating a scrapbook over here of samples, we're not going to use. So I can put this one right here to hear it in my track, make it bigger. If I don't like it, try another one. Try another one. Let's say I like this one, make it nice and big. We could take the other items and instead of deleting them, just select them all, mute them, and they're not going to play. But we can keep these here as a scrapbook to choose from. In case you want to use a different one later, just bring it over to a different spot and you have all these items to choose from without having to delete them or find them later. It's very handy for effects or even drum samples where you don't want to commit to getting rid of them, but you don't want them to play. You can just create a scrapbook like this, where you can choose different sounds and move them around or change their size very easily. Now we should also take a look at what happens when we're recording with free item positioning turned on. So let's say I'm going to record a piano part into Reaper. Normally, it's going to behave like this. And if I record again, and again, it's going to create a separate take for each performance each time we hit record. That's how it normally is going to work. But if we switch this to free item positioning right here, it's going to record each piece on top of each other. Record again. One more time. Now we have three pieces that are all going to play at the same time. But if you notice, as we're recording, we're not hearing the other ones in playback. If you want that, let's say you're recording vocals and layering them, or different piano parts like this, you might want to turn on the option Monitor Track Media when recording. If that's turned on, we're going to hear the other items as we record new ones so we can layer them very easily. And now we have three different parts, always separate items to work with. We can move them around, change their height, put them on top of each other, and they're all going to play at the same time. We can clean them up with that keystroke. Very helpful for stacking parts and putting them on top of each other while having them all on the same track. And it'll work the same way for MIDI. Let's layer a multi MIDI performance on this track. We'll right click, put it into free item positioning mode, and we can record our MIDI creating multiple parts, one for each pass. Make sure we turn on the option right here, monitor track media when recording, and we can layer our performance. And just like that, 
we have three parts that are going to play on top of each other, all on the same track, triggering the same sounds. It's a great way of layering our MIDI, our audio, or anything we want, all on the same track. So that's pretty much it. That's free item positioning in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.